Hi everyone, this is Freddy Frogs presenting a tutorial on Touch OS C. Touch OS C is a great app made by Hexler for iPads, iPod Touch and iPhones. It will let you customize your own template, create your own objects in order to attach them and control different aspects of your DAW, in this case Ableton Live. So I've been using this for a few years now as part of my performance to control my one-shot sounds, so razors, fallers, even shorter vocal slices like so. This type of sounds enable you to transition within your performance, helping introducing new sounds and switching between different scenes, restructuring your performance better. We have here a part of my live set, let me demonstrate a little bit how this works. We have uh, channel 1 we have kick drums, channel 3 we have uh, breaks and Channel 4 we have drums and hi-hats, channel 2 is for the bass, and channel 5 onwards is for the melodies. So as I said, sending these long one-shots for example will allow you to introduce new sounds like so. Not only that, but as I said, you can use the shorter sounds to create more dynamic loops on the fly. Let me just demonstrate that. We have a looper rigged up after these sounds to enable us to record. Once this is recorded, you can uh, resequence it a little bit using a beat repeat. Like so. Once the loop is taken, you can delay it. You can frequency shift it. And even filter it. You can add a new sound to the loop. And you can also shorten the length of the loop. So this opens up loads of possibilities. On the fly loop making is received really well by the crowd and also I've been walking into the crowd and asked some of the people to actually tap the sounds. You should see the look on their face when they realize that their tapping is actually being played on a loud sound system and integrated as part of the performance. It's a really rewarding technique. I've had loads of great feedback from that. Let me walk you through the steps needed in order to set up such a system. We have here a MIDI track loaded with a drum rack. This drum rack has been loaded with loads of these one-shot sounds. Now what's important here is that each of the sounds should be looked at in terms of length. You see the volume envelope here will determine the shape of your sound. And the main question is what do you want the sound to do once you've released the pad? Do you want the sound to stop immediately? Making it a quite a dynamic sound or do you want the sound to carry on much longer raising the release here allowing the sound to become a much longer sort of transition sound also you will want to level up the sounds with their volume control over here so that there are less volume decrepancies between them and you get a much more constant volume also afterwards we have a EQ8 and that's rolling off the bass to clean up the sounds and raise a little bit the top so they cut through the mix a bit better a limiter is placed at the end of the rack here to further control the level, the volumes of your sounds. You need to drive the gain up here to achieve best results. Once the rack has been built, you can load different effects afterwards. As I said earlier on, we have a looper here that's being placed on two bars and ready to record. We have a rack here with a beat repeat, allowing me to resequence, to quantize a little bit what I've just been tapping. We have a delay here to add space and a filter over here to remove the sound and a frequency shifter to quirk it a little bit. A limiter at the end of the chain here is acting as a brick wall to prevent any loud burst of sound in case something happens. Great, so that's how you set up your sound cube, your rack loaded with loads of one shots, okay? Now let me introduce you to the TouchOSC editor. This is a free app you can get from the Hexler website and this will let you basically create your templates. You need to select what type of device you want to create a template for and once this is done you right click on the black canvas here to create your objects. Your objects can be 
resized, moved about, and more importantly, uh, customized here with uh, names and colors, and also more importantly, the type of MIDI message it's going to send. You have different types, program changes, control changes. Depending on the object you have created, you will get different options here. For example, MIDI notes or control changes. Once this is chosen, you can determine the MIDI channel. Usually, one is just fine, depending on what other controllers you have attached to your live set. And then you can set the type of numbers it's sending, the MIDI CC number. Great, so once this is done, you can also duplicate the different objects here to basically further develop your template. The objects can be also realigned properly so they have the same line and it looks pretty. Once again let me show you the, the one I created for my looper, for my sound cube. And there we are, different controls. Didn't take me that long to, to make this and we now need to send it over to my iPad. So in order to do this we need to get my two devices, the iPad and the, the Mac, on the same network. In a venue you probably want to create an ad hoc network at the bottom here, create network. Okay, you can call this, uh, let's call it test1 for example. And in your settings in your iPad you can now go and log into this Wi-Fi network over here. Great, it should come up here, test1, this is it. And this is basically a, a, a network between your iPad and your Mac, and it's called an ad hoc network. Once this is done, you can go back to TouchOSC over here. And in the configuration panel, you can basically go to the layout page here and add a new layout. On TouchOSC editor, hit the sync button, and the name of your computer should come up here and you hit it and it's downloading now the template. This takes only a few seconds. Once the template has been sent over, you'll find its name over here. Select it, and that's it. You're done. We now need to create a MIDI network between your Mac and your iPad. This is done using the audio MIDI setup. You will find this on your application utility audio MIDI setup. In there, you need to open the MIDI window right there. And that's it. Now you hit the network button here, network icon, double click it, and this will open your MIDI network setup. So as default, you shouldn't have any session here, so you need to create one with the plus button, enable it. In the directory, your iPod's name should come up if you're on the same network as your computer, and you need to choose it and connect it to the session. That's it. We created now a MIDI network between your iPod or your iPad or your iPhone and your computer. Right, so that's quite a few steps. We've already looked at creating a sound cube and now we've also looked at creating our own template using Touch OSC Editor and sending it over to the iPad. We've also looked at how to connect your two computers on the same MIDI network so that you can send MIDI messages from the iPad to Ableton Live. Now in Ableton Live itself you need to go to your preferences and in the MIDI sync tab you should find your network session as part of an available controller. Make sure you enable track that's for MIDI notes and remote that's for your CC numbers and this acts just basically like a controller allowing you to now control your sounds. Notice how in the I.O. section of the MIDI track I've set my network as the main controller for this track. This is quite important as this will prevent any conflict between various controllers that could be set up on this performance template. Right, so the iPad can be used as a controller. It's a light portable controller. Remember, the weight of your equipment when you're performing is very important as uh, taking planes sometimes is difficult with heavy, heavy equipment. Not only that, but the iPad can also be used in the plane to do other things. Great, so that's it for us today. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Speak to you soon.
Point Blank Online, you've got two methods of interaction with your tutor. Firstly, you've got the weekly online masterclass, which is in real time. And then also we've got feedback on your assignments, and that's known as DVR. So the online masterclass is a one hour session you get with your tutor every week. You can ask questions about the lesson content and get instant feedback and also demonstrations on the fly from their computer desktop with our streaming technology. DVR stands for Direct Video Response and the concept is really simple. You upload your Ableton Logic or Cubase project file to your tutor. He downloads it and then pushes record on the screen capturing software and evaluates your work. So basically giving you one-to-one -one feedback. You see all of the mouse movements and any parameter changes made by your tutor. It's kind of like sitting in the studio over their shoulder watching what they're doing whilst they work. We have found the DVR process has truly revolutionized the way that we teach online and the results speak for themselves. Book your place on the course now by visiting pointblankonline.net.